A peace that was truly permanent would be the same as a permanent war. This, although the vast majority of party members understand it only in a shallower sense, is the inner meaning of the party slogan, War is Peace. Emmanuel Goldstein, The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism. Hello again. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Reinforcing the idea of a political end game here, a final letter from Don Quixote arrives at Sancho's court. Sancho orders his secretary to look it over, and he responds, it can well be read out loud for what Sir Don Quixote writes to your grace should be written and stamped in letters of gold. Don Quixote's preamble indicates his pride in Sancho's humility, which has caused a metamorphosis. He alludes to Psalms 113, verse 7, and 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 18, when he gives thanks to heaven, which knows how to lift the poor out of the dung heap. He also alludes to Sancho's miraculous transformation from an ass into a human being. They tell me that you govern as if you were a man and that you are a man as if you were a beast, according to the humility that you manifest. There's more advice here on how to avoid a political fall from grace. Be civil, make sure the people are well fed, don't issue too many decrees, embrace virtue and avoid vice, remember the Aristotelian middle way, and my favorite, promote justice and fairness regarding weights and measures in the marketplace. Above all, Sancho should review Don Quixote's written advice. Then Don Quixote informs Sancho about a certain catment, asks him if he still thinks the mayordomo is the Countess Trifalde, and hints at Rodriguez's business, which he fears will anger the Duke and Duchess. Did you know? The battles of Malta, 1565, and Lepanto, 1571, were financed primarily by Spanish silver mines in the New World, the largest among these being Potosí in modern-day Bolivia. Finally, Don Quixote cites an anti-utopian Aristotelian dictum in Latin, amicus plato sed magis amica veritas, or Plato is a friend, but the truth is a greater friend. Strangely, he assumes Sancho has already learned this from his governing experience. Don Quixote was an idealistic humanist at the beginning of his letter, but he's a rational scholastic at the end. Typically, right when we locate a moral or identify with a character in Don Quixote, Cervantes deploys irony and other perspectives to make us question our own conclusions. Take Sancho's letter. Whereas Don Quixote's letter suggested that the governor was doing well, Sancho's reply is ominous. Sancho has ignored some of Don Quixote's most important advice in favor of humility and against lineage. Specifically, he displays social status by not cutting his fingernails, and he decides to marry his son to the distressed daughter of Diego de la Llana because the latter is as much an Hidalgo and an old Christian as one could ask. Furthermore, although he's concerned with maintaining an orderly marketplace, he still sounds corrupt at times. For example, he exaggerates his avoidance of graft and bribes. So far, I have not handled any fees nor taken any bribes. But he then says he will acquire gifts for Don Quixote either by skirt or by sleeve. That is, honestly or dishonestly. Sancho says he doesn't understand what Don Quixote means by the catting although he assumes it involves enchanters. He also expresses concern that Don Quixote might alienate his noble benefactors. Strangest of all, Sancho sends his master a very curious type of cane flute, which is attached to bladders that they make on this aisle. This echoes the albogues, or double flutes, of Camacho's wedding in Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 19, the devil's bladders in Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 11, the man who inflates dogs in the prologue to Don Quixote Part 2, and the knight of the Phoebus's enema 
in Don Quixote Part 1, Chapter 15. Quixotic Mission What other character left a letter written in gold? A. The Giant Malambruno B. The Giant Morgante C. The Giant Caraculiambro Correct answer, A, the Giant's Malambruno. Finally, we come to the edicts that Sancho imposes on the citizens of Barataria, the constitutions of the great governor Sancho Panza. Perspectivism. As elsewhere in Sancho's reign, this legal document manifests a weird combination of wisdom and stupidity. Sancho's laws are prudent, tragic, or absurd, depending on your point of view. Keep in mind that many of these laws were actually attempted in Cervantes' day. Sancho creates the office of bailiff for the poor, which will make sure that beggars don't fake their poverty. He bans erotic singing and requires blind beggars to document the authenticity of the miracles in their songs. Cervantes' skeptical attitude toward religious thinking arises here again but prices and governmental interference in the marketplace are the more important focus. Sancho's legal contradictions suggest political satire. On one hand, he bans hoarding and speculation, not good economic policy. On the other hand, he allows market pricing on the importation of wines so long as they are properly labeled, so as to be able to price them according to their quality, sweetness, and reputation. And yet, he orders fraud in selling wine punishable by death. His most destructive and deeply ironical laws involve price fixing. He lowered the prices of all types of footwear, especially that of shoes, which it seemed to him were running a bit inflated. He placed a ceiling on the salaries of servants, which galloped freely down the road of self-interest. Like Sancho's first legal case, when the farmer asked the tailor to make more and more hats from the same amount of cloth, Sancho has now reduced the quality and accessibility of footwear for the citizens of Barataria. Sancho also orders a maximum wage for servants. This is a particularly odd gesture given our squire's constant requests for a salary from his master. Thank you for joining me in this chapter. Hope you can join me in the next one. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.